All right, so let's do this thought experiment together. Imagine it's still the 2024 presidential election, but there's no internet, no cell phones, no social media, and no email. If you wanted to learn about the candidates, you'd have to actually go see them speak in person, standing on a stage, speaking to a crowd. Now imagine you're at one of these events watching both candidates speak. One candidate is on stage speaking with the regular voice, just talking, while the other is on the other side of the stage talking, but they're talking into a megaphone. Which candidate's message is gonna reach more people? Clearly it's the candidate who has the megaphone. Now think of artificial intelligence just like that megaphone. It has the ability to amplify everything, whether that's factual stories, manipulated stories, or just made up bullshit. And it's not going anywhere. That's why it's so important to understand how it works, how it's shaping the information that you see, and how it can be used to manipulate your perception of things so that you can actually stay in control of your thoughts, your opinions, and maintain your independent thought as we step into this matrix of bullshit. All right, now before we actually dig into the things that I wanna talk about in relation to AI, we need to establish a couple truths. The first truth is that politicians and their voter bases on both sides now and throughout history are human beings. We do a terrible job of basically like strawmanning our opposition, of making them out to be this character who, you know, can barely tie their shoes, is so stupid, doesn't have any preferences. It's disingenuous <laughs> to claim that the biases they're exhibited on Fox News are any different from the biases exhibited on MSNBC. It that's not the case at all. We're all humans, we're all nuanced, we all have different experiences that led us to be who we are today. And of course that's gonna affect your voting patterns. Of course that's gonna affect which side of the two-sided debate you fall on. It's a two-party system. You have to vote for one of us. Once we recognize that the entire political spectrum is made up of human beings, we need to admit that everybody involved, everybody who votes, is prone to confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is the tendency to interpret new evidence as confirmation of one's existing beliefs or theories. I'm not the Messiah! I say you are, Lord, and I should know I followed a few! And that is not limited to the left or the right, or the independents, or the Green Party, or the Libertarians, or whatever the hell else there is today. That's a human phenomenon. We are a narrative-based species. We interpret the world through stories, basically, and whenever we hear a fact, a theory, anything that could be construed to support what we already believe, we're gonna have a much easier job believing that. We're gonna be much less skeptical of that fact than we would be of something that opposes what we already believe. So you need to keep that in mind when we start to talk about AI. Don't blame me, I voted for Kodos. So one of the big ways that you're gonna see AI pushing bullshit into this election is AI imagery. So we already saw that image go viral of the Pope wearing the puffy coat last year or the year before, and a lot of people fell for it. A lot of people thought it was real because it looks pretty real. So you're gonna see a ton more of that. You're gonna see a ton more fake AI imagery that's so good that it probably will get picked up on news networks. It probably will get talked about on podcasts and it probably will get talked about by talking heads on their late night shows despite the fact that it's a completely fabricated image. So how can you protect yourself against believing this bullshit? So AI art is really good, but it does have a lot of flaws. The first thing you need to look for is words in the background. AI art is terrible at making words. So meaning if you see a picture of a political rally for your candidate, the opposing candidate, a random candidate that is made up, look at the signs in the background. They are gonna be a surefire way to tell you if this is a real picture or if this is a completely fabricated AI generated picture. The second thing to look out for is the hands. Fingers, toes, any of those extra digits, AI kind of still sucks at. It requires a pretty good AI artist to make hands that are perfect. So hands in any picture, fingers, basically anything from the elbow down is a dead giveaway that the picture is not genuine. And the third thing is the misplaced blurriness. So you know when you see a professionally taken photo, like a photo on Getty Images or something, the subject of the photo is always in focus. And then there's a degree of blur on the background and other subjects in the photo. That's the art of photography. AI doesn't necessarily understand the difference between subject and background. So AI art is going to be everywhere. You've probably fallen for a couple pictures before. I know I definitely have. Everything in an election cycle is designed to use our emotions and our psychology against us. So you have have to take that step back, have to take that deep breath, have to logically examine certain things to make sure what you're feeding your psychology, what you're feeding your beliefs is actually genuine so you don't end up like some lunatic because we already have enough lunatics in this country. The second thing is AI voice or AI audio, whatever you want to call it. There are a ton of different services that provide AI voice cloning and these are done with good intentions. I just want to get off the bat and say the majority of the AI engine stuff, the majority of the AI products are made with good intention. Because with this technology, we can really solve a lot of problems. Like we've been able to translate whale songs because of an AI voice technology. And one of my favorite examples is actually off the coast of Norway every year. There's a group of false killer whales that speak one way and a group of dolphins that speak another way. And they come together in a super pod and hunt. And when they do, they speak a third 
different thing. Whoa. Yeah, so like, you're also able to translate things in real time because of these AI voice cloning thing. But you're also able to make it sound like a famous person is saying something that would actively harm their reputation. I am not Morgan Freeman. Now, if you spend enough time trying to clone a voice, if you spend enough time tweaking a voice, you can get it like 99% perfect, but there are some things that you need to look out for. The first thing is basically like a flat emotionless tone. AI generated audio is pretty darn good, but it still doesn't have like the emotions behind our speech down. It sounds a little flat. Obviously it sounds robotic because it's a robotic algorithm. But if you're hearing an answer, if you're hearing a sound clip from someone who's normally really animated and they say a lot of things and they move a lot and their voice tone changes, they go low, then they go high, then they sound angry, you know, like both fucking candidates. And it sounds like they're on Benadryl and they're talking like this. You can't safely assume it's an AI voice clone, but you should be a little more skeptical. The second thing is the mispronunciation of common words. But you'll notice a lot of words that kind of have like a nuanced pronunciation will be pronounced incorrectly. So nuanced might be one of those. It might come out instead of saying nuanced, it might say nunced or nanced. And the third thing is weird background noises and weird background pops. That's because every AI voice clone is coming from multiple different sources. And if in this instance, if what we're talking about is someone trying to clone the voice of a very public figure, they're most likely not going to have exclusively the audio of just that speaking voice. There's gonna be different tones in the background, even if it's just different Hertz levels, different white noise. And while the AI is trained to clone the voice, it's also trained to clone all the audio around the voice. So if you hear an odd popping, an odd crackling, anything that just sounds out of place, it could be a sign that what you're listening to isn't genuine and is complete horseshit designed, made up just to confuse you. The third thing you have to look out for is AI video. Now what you're seeing now is actually not me. It's an AI video that I can make for like $20 a month. Now AI video has come leaps and bounds from the first time we had access to it, like a year, year and a half. AI video is very clean, very smooth, but not everybody can make the end product look like that. Most AI video is warped. Most AI video can't keep faces the same as the body turns its head. And most AI video has very awkward transitions where things morph into each other. So I don't really think that AI video is something that we're gonna have to deal with right now. As far as being something like, did it really happen? Is that a real event? Or is this something some kid in his basement typed up and created? But I do think it's very important to know that that does exist. And within probably six months, probably right after the next president is sworn in, the technology probably will be that advanced. Now, the reason I brought up confirmation bias in the beginning of this video is because that's the most important thing we need to focus on because we are all prone to confirmation bias, myself included, you included. We all have this story, these deep beliefs. The way that we see the world is our story or the story of our people people, the story of our culture, the story of our nation, whatever it may be. And we're going to see things that confirm our already deeply held beliefs because that's what we need to cope with the chaos of the real world. It's not a good thing or a bad thing. It's just a thing. And you're as prone to it as the people that you absolutely hate on the other side of the political spectrum. And your ability, our ability to critically think about the things that we see so that we don't blindly believe just complete bullshit that reinforces our bubble is going to be tested more now than it ever has before. Because previously when it came to politics, we could be manipulated by artificial words, speeches, pamphlets, newspaper articles, simply words that weren't true. But now we're going to have to deal with images, sounds, and video of things that are manipulated or just flat out fabrications that will lessen our ability to critically think about our actual situation and our actual beliefs in this new world. So understanding AI is very important. Understanding the signs of a manipulated image, a manipulated soundbite, and a manipulated video are gonna go a long way to making sure that you can maintain your independent thought in this sea of bullshit that we're stepping into. So I'm a big proponent of AI because I think that AI, when utilized correctly by the little guy, is the most powerful tool we've ever had to be able to compete with these billion dollar companies, to be able to build something as a solo entrepreneur or as a small business, or to do something creative that used to be way beyond our budget. Budget. But that being said, every tool we have has a good use and a bad use. And most of the time you find the bad use for a tool or an issue during an election cycle because an election cycle's job is not to inform us, it's to emotionally manipulate us to act quickly and double down onto our already existing confirmation biases. Because the political parties, the politicians, let's be honest, at this point in American history, it's very obvious. Neither side really gives a shit about you or me. The majority of them care about getting in power, staying in power, insider trading, and getting, getting kickbacks from lobbyists. They blew up Congress! 
fish. <laughs> Meanwhile, we, the average person, are basically just being sold down the river and taxed to death. So I really hope you take the time to understand AI because the worst thing that we can have is an uninformed voter base, more so than we already have. And the best thing you can do, regardless of where you fall on the political spectrum, is understand the ways that you could potentially be manipulated so you know that your beliefs are your beliefs. You know that your beliefs were not manipulated. You weren't sold a falsehood in order to believe what you believe. Your beliefs, the way you vote, is a culmination of your life experiences, of your perspective. The most important thing you can do as an individual is protect that.